Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We've been studying the subject growing up spiritually, and we are talking about the third stage that we have been teaching on, the mature Christian and characteristics of a mature Christian. And yesterday, we were talking about a mature Christian talks about spiritual things. Now, remember, the characteristics are in what you think, what you say, and what you do. When you're a child, you talk like a child. But when you become an adult, you talk like an adult. When you're a child, you think like a child. But when you become an adult, you think like an adult. So how does a spiritual adult think and talk? Well, we said that a mature Christian controls his tongue, and that means using words with restraint and being slow to speak. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven: a man of knowledge uses words with restraint. And James one nineteen: everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. James one twenty six says that if you do not keep a tight rein on your tongue, you deceive yourself and your religion or spirituality is worthless. And whoever is not at fault in what he says, he is a mature man, a perfect man, which means mature. He is mature. And so we are careful about what we say. But then yesterday we were talking about talking about spiritual things. And the root of that is that spiritual things are a priority in your life. And when they become a priority in your life, then they are in your heart in abundance. And when they are in your heart in abundance, then they come out your mouth in abundance. And back to Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 and 35. X, actually, let me just start with the last line in verse 34, Matthew 1234, the last line for out of the abundance or the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks so we can know what is in your heart by knowing what you say, because what you say and what you talk about is what is in your heart in abundance. And when spiritual things are a priority We're not talking about you don't ever discuss natural things because, of course, we live in a natural world. We have situations to discuss. We have to talk about uh, where we're going to go, what we're going to do, what we're going to eat, how we're going to do things. Yes, we do discuss them, but they then are not the priority in our lives and Let me say it like this. Everything you say and talk about and think about is seen through the glasses of the word of God. There used to be a saying that was heard. A person is so heavenly minded. They're no earthly good. Well, if you change that to spiritually minded, it is. If you are the more spiritually minded you are, the more earthly good you are, not the less. It is not a true statement that being spiritually minded makes you no earthly good because it is the opposite. The more spiritually minded you are, the more earthly good you are because the more you have the answers to life's questions and problems, the more you have the solutions because this world does not have answers. This world does not have solutions. They are full of unanswered questions, wonderings, wondering how to do this, how to do that. But it's by the word of God and by the leading of the spirit that we know what to do and how to do it. And therefore we receive the answers from God.
And that's when you can actually be more of a help to your friends, to your family members. When you have the word of God in you and you can see everything through the word, you begin to see your finances through the word of God. You see your body and your health through the word of God. You see your family situations and your marriage through the word. You see your job through the word. You see your friends and their situations and your relationships through the word, through the word of God. And you grow in spiritual understanding, wisdom and discernment, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Then you begin tapping into a supernatural source And wellspring of answers, answers, answers to every question in life, answers to every problem and situation, a solution for everything. You tap into the wellspring and the source of all answers and all solutions. When you tap into the word and into the Holy Spirit and learn to draw from the word and the Holy spirit answers for every situation in life. And so being more spiritually minded makes you more earthly good because you get all the answers. Not that you know everything, but you have access to the source of all wisdom and knowledge, all answers and solutions. And so You become very earthly, good, very valuable to friends and family when you grow spiritually in the word of God, because the word becomes, like we said before, your paradigm shifts to seeing things the way God sees, thinking the way God thinks. And then you get God's answers for life's situations and problems and questions. Hallelujah. So a spiritual and mature Christian thinks about spiritual things and talks about spiritual things because the word of God is a priority and what God says about it is a priority and going to church and going to other church services and meetings and church conferences are a priority because you are drawing from those services to gain Revelation to gain anointing and and depth in the spirit of God. So you are eager to do the spiritual things in life and then you apply those spiritual things to your natural situations, finances, family, body, health, strength, mind, all these areas, you apply the spiritual truths to your physical, natural life and you have answers. Glory to God. Also in that same line, then a mature Christian speaks pleasant words at all times. Proverbs 15, 4, Proverbs 15, 4 says the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. The tongue that brings healing is a tree. Does your tongue or what you say bring healing to people? Or is your tongue a knife and a sword that cuts people apart, tears them down, pierces their heart and hurts them? You know, you can use your tongue to hurt and injure, stab and wound, cut and tear down, Or if you are a mature Christian, you use your word to heal. You use your tongue and words to heal. You see somebody wounded. You speak words that heal. You see a strifeful situation and you speak words that bring peace in the situation instead of stirring up more strife. You know, you can add fuel to an argument by um, speaking evil words, by speaking strifeful words, you just add fuel. Or you can put out the argument and by putting water on that fire, 
by speaking words of healing, words of peace. Do you stir up strife or do you put out strife with peaceful words? Words that calm the storm, words that calm the argument and put it to not to nothing. A tongue, the tongue that brings healing, brings healing, brings peace, brings wholeness is a tree of life. And then Ecclesiastes 10, 12 says words from a wise man's mouth are gracious. If you're, wor- if you're wise, then your words are gracious. If your words are not gracious, then you are not wise. If your words are strifeful, if your words are divisive, if your words are harmful and hurtful, you are foolish. You are foolish because a wise person's words are gracious, healing, peaceful. Ephesians chapter four, verse 29, Ephesians four twenty nine. Do not let this is you don't let, you know, people say, well, I just can't help it. That's a lie. And as long as you believe that lie, you are going to keep sinning. But sin is in the mouth when you are speaking hurtful words. Do not let any unwholesome talk, unwholesome, anything that's not wholesome, healing, strengthening, building up. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only, only, only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs so that it may benefit, benefit, benefit those who listen. You need to speak only what is helpful for building up, that it benefits the hearer. If you speak anything that is hurtful, tearing down, then you are speaking sinful words and you are carnal. Colossians 4, 6, Colossians 4, 6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer with every answer. Everyone speaking peaceful words, peace, loving words, healing words, encouraging words, strengthening words. And never words that criticize, tear down, hurt others. Speaking only what is helpful and beneficial for building others up. Healing a tree of life coming out of your mouth. A wise person and a mature Christian controls his tongue. Does not speak anything that is hurtful. Or tearing down, divisive, strifeful, critical. But only what is healing, giving life, ministering to the hearer, bringing peace to strifeful situations, putting out the fire instead of stirring up the fire, bringing calmness in a situation where people are worried and fearful. Then you speak words that bring calmness. Bring peace of heart and mind, calming. Don't worry. You can, this is going to turn for your good. God is going to give you the victory. Be speaking words of life and healing, peace and comfort, building others up always and only. That's what it says. You say, how can I do it? It says only what is helpful for building others up. God never tells you to do something that you cannot do. He never tells you to do something you cannot do, but it's a matter of training. Remember going back to the child youth stage, that child youth stage is the stage of training and training and training discipline and discipline like an athlete trains for the Olympics, like a football player, uh, professional player 
trains for the games, like a musician trains and practices. You train and discipline your heart, your mind, your mouth, and your body to come under the discipline and control of your spirit. Amen. Then let's go on. A mature Christian thinks according to the spirit. This is goes back to what we talked about talking about spiritual things. Well, that shows what's in your heart in abundance. It shows also what's in your mind in abundance. These are the things that become a priority in your life. And when you see everything in your life through the eyeglasses of the word, you look at your finances through the glasses of the word. You look at your physical body and health through the fu- through the eyeglasses of the word. You look at your family through the eyeglasses of the word, your marriage, your job through the eyeglasses of the word. So you are thinking and meditating on the word and you are seeing everything the way God sees it. You are getting a godly discernment, wisdom, understanding. So that you get answers and solutions for every situation. Let's look at scripture. Thinking according to the word and the spirit. Joshua 1.8. Do not let. Here's another do not let. We read do not let in Ephesians 4.29. Now we have do not let in Joshua 1.8. This is your job. And remember, let me go back to saying this again. God will never do for you what he told you to do. If he told you to do something, he's not going to do it for you. So fruitless, wasted, empty prayers are prayers that say, God, make me. Make me do this right. Make me say only good things. Make me think only good things. Or God, don't let me say anything bad. God, stop me. Well, the only way God stops you is by the promptings of the spirit in you. The spirit in you prompts you. Don't say that. Don't do that. But it is you that makes the choice to yield and obey the spirit or yield and obey the carnal nature. You make the choice. You are the one standing in the middle. The Holy Spirit is is there to teach you, to guide you, to give you the direction, what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. Don't say that. Say it like this. But you are in control of your own body. You are in control of your mind. You are in control of your mouth. And you are the one that makes the final decision of what you think and what you say and what you do. You, I want you to say this after, after me. Say this right now. My mind is my mind. Say it again. My mind is my mind. Say my mouth is my mouth. Say it again. My mouth is my mouth. Say it one more time. My mouth is my mouth. And your body. Say my body is my body. Say it again. My body is my body. What does that mean? It means it's under your control. You have a free will. God does not take control of your will. He leaves you with your free will to make your choices every day. To follow the spirit or to follow the fleshly desires. And you are the one in control of your mind, your mouth, in your body. You bring your mind, mouth, and body under subjection to the spirit by having a strong spirit. And remember, we talked about you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. You have to strengthen your spirit to be able to rule and dominate your flesh. Most people, including Christians, have never practiced training their spirit strengthening their spirit. How do you strengthen the spirit food and exercise? The food is the word. The exercise is practice. And by training your spirit, it gets stronger. And remember the example, 
The, the carnal Christian is one who has a loud voice. The flesh has a loud voice. I want to say what I want to say. I want to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to go where I want to go. And your spirit on the inside is so weak. Your, your spirit is saying, no, don't do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't say that. I know I shouldn't say that, the body says, but I want to say it. I want to do it. You see, so your body is dominating. Your flesh is dominating. And that's a carnal Christian, a baby and child Christian is flesh dominated. But when you discipline, train, feed your spirit with the word of God, your spirit gets stronger and stronger. And on the inside of you, the spirit of man in the inside of you, your human spirit gets stronger and begins saying, body, shut up and get in line. Body, you're going to only do what I say. And the body gets weaker. And the body says, but I want to do that. And your spirit says, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to obey me. And your spirit takes control over your body. Your spirit takes control over your mind. Mind, you're not going to think that way. You're going to turn around right now. You're going to think on the word. You're going to think the hope of and the faith and the love of God. You're going to think on the joy of the Lord. And you're the peace that passes understanding. God is your answer. God is your strength. God is your victory. God is your deliverer. God is your provider. You're not going to fear. You're not going to worry. You're not going to think on those sinful thoughts. And your spirit takes control and dominating your mind and body. That is a mature Christian. A mature Christian is one whose spirit on the inside is strong and forceful, developed, exercised by the word, and then controls the mind and the body. Let me read you some more scriptures. A mature Christian Thinks according to the spirit. Do not let this Joshua one eight again. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it. That's meditation in your mind. Don't let it out of your mouth. Put it in your mouth and say it so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. So you have don't let it out of your mouth. Talk about it, speak it, quote the word, speak the scriptures and talk about revelation and insights. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. So you have the meditation, you have the speaking of the mouth and you have the doing of the word of God. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You know, the world is looking for secrets to success. This is it. This is number one supernatural key to success is the word of God being in your heart, mind, mouth, and actions. Then Romans chapter eight, Romans eight verses five and six, Romans eight, five and six. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. You see, the mind is set on spiritual things and you see everything through the glasses of the word. Verse six The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. When you bring your mind under control and domination to the word of God, it will be life to your mind and your flesh and your whole situation, uh, life situations, and it'll be peace to your heart. Romans 12, two, again, do not conform. That means to be pressed into the mold. Don't be pressed into the mold any longer to the pattern of this world. The world is always trying to press you into their mold. Think the way they think. Accept what they accept. Homosexuality, the world is saying, is okay and and you should accept it. That's the mold of the world, but God calls it sin and God calls it an abomination. Abortion, the world says, should be accepted. 
God says it's an abomination. These things do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world. Don't be pressed into their mold. Do, but be different. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So the mature Christian is thinking according to the word of God and the spirit of God taught by the spirit, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. And what you, your spirit dominates and controls your mind, your mouth, and your body. Your spirit is in control of you. Your spirit is strong on the inside of you, telling you what to do, guiding your life. And so then the spiritual things are a priority. You seek first the kingdom. You seek first his, the kingdom, remember, is the laws of the kingdom, the spiritual laws of operation, love and faith and spiritual authority and dominion, obedience, sowing and reaping. And you are seeking those spiritual laws of the kingdom. You're putting them in practice in your life. You're meditating on them. You're talking about them you're doing them and those things rule your life and it produces life and peace it produces zoe everlasting god kind of life and god quality of life those things then your life begins to bear the fruit of god your life begins to bear good fruit and producing prosperity and healing and strength, peace of mind in all these situations in your life. Well, we're going to pick this up tomorrow talking about learning spiritual knowledge. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.